home and welcome back to my studio. Today is a interim special edition. Let's begin painting with acrylics. So the last class we did, we did a landscape. And while I was doing the landscape, I started to get very frustrated because of the lack of colors that I could mix with the colors that I had told my niece to buy. I told her to get a, a medium red, a medium yellow, and a medium blue, and we would mix colors with it. But I can't get any bright colors from it, and it started to really frustrate me. So I decided what I would do is I would put out this additional video, so it's not part of the classes, it's just going to be an extra video, um, to talk about that and to talk about my frustration, and I'm sure it's frustrating you guys too. I know that Gina was a little bit frustrated that she could not get a bright purple or a bright red for her still life and she talked to me about it that it was kind of pinky. The red that she had bought she got a primary red and it was kind of a pinky. So I'm going to talk about it now so that you have the information. If you decide that you want to continue painting and you want to get additional colors this will give you that information and if you're just going to do the class with the supplies that I did in the first class that's fine too but I think you should know the information. All right so we're going to use uh, the canvas paper from the original class. I'm just going to take one sheet out here because we're going to be making a little bit of a mess and I want to zoom out and just show you. So as we know, I am not a realistic painter. I'm an abstract painter. The majority of my work that I'm doing right now is with fluid acrylic paints. I have over 60 colors that I've mixed. Um, I use mostly Liquitex Basics and a little bit of Amsterdam paints. And I'm just going to show you here. See, this is a light yellow, a medium yellow, and a dark yellow. This is the one that I told Gina to get. But different yellows mixed with different blues give you different greens. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to use my, uh, my fluid acrylic paints just because it's easier than uh, using a spatula to dig paint out of all those jars. It'll be a, a waste of paint. This is the exact same paint that comes out of the tube. So it's the exact same paint that comes out of the tube, except it's mixed 50-50 by weight with water so that I can get something liquidier to do my pouring with. We'll talk about pouring um, probably one of the last classes just for kicks and giggles. We'll see um, what it is that I do, but I want you to know that there's nothing different. This is the exact same. So this one here is cadmium red medium. It's the paint came out of here, went into this squeeze tube, and I added 50% water by weight, but it's the exact same color. That's what I want you to know. Okay, so we're going to take um, the three reds, the three yellows, and the three blues. So I told uh, Gina to get ultramarine blue. I'm going to pick a cerulean blue and and a light blue. So we're going to color mix with these nine colors and I'm going to show you the difference that a different color of blue makes. There's actually a really cool book called uh, yellow and blue don't make green. I can't remember the name of the author, but I will put a link to it down in the dibbly do so that if you're interested in color mixing, um, you would be able to get some more information. And I got my color wheel back. And again, it says, you know, yellow and blue make green, but different yellows and different blues make different greens. That's what we're going to talk about right now. So we're going to do an experiment. 
and I'm going to make little dots of color uh, there as close as we can get okay so we're going to start with the light yellow so I'm going to put a drop of light yellow down here and we're going to put one of the light blue Boop. and one of the medium blue one of the dark blue oh I didn't so there's that green which is kind of cool and this is this green which is a different green and then there's this green three different colors of green with three different colors of blue so you're seeing the problem <laughs> that I have so I'm going to do the same with the reds actually I should have spread this out more let's just take that away <laughs> so this is the light yellow I'm going to do it right here light yellow light yellow light yellow with the light red the medium red and the dark red so this gives me this orange this orange which is like a tomato orange which is what we were getting and then this one is a much darker kind of a crimsony orange see that that's a bit of an issue because we were getting this and we wanted that and you can add a little bit of white but you'll just pastelize that all right so let's go with the medium yellow and we'll put the medium yellow here and we'll put again light blue medium blue dark blue and again I'm trying to mix these 50 50 but if you mix them in different ratios you're going to get different colors too and I'll show you that on another piece of paper in a minute and the dark red all right so this is with the medium yellow and here's with so that was the light blue, this is the medium blue, and this here is the dark blue. That's a really dark green. And again, if I put more yellow into it, here, where's my medium yellow? Let me just down here add in a little bit more yellow see if that's 50 50 this is more like 75 25 see that and here we go with this is the medium yellow with the light red the medium red And the dark red and again if we add another drop of the yellow down here we will get an even different it's not even really an orange because the red's so powerful but we keep adding yellow in and we'll eventually get so 
see that? And then finally, with the dark yellow, my dots are getting bigger. <laughs> And now we have light blue, medium blue, dark blue, the dark red, the medium red, and the light red. All right. So here we go. So there's your different greens, just by changing the yellow. This one's more of a bluish green. This one is a, um, because the yellow is darker, you're going to get a darker color. And again, this is a very dark kind of olivey green. And then the orange here. This is a nice bright orange. Using the light uh, yellow, we're getting a brighter color. With the, with the dark yellow, with the medium yellow, see we're kind of getting that tomato-y color because we were using the two, two medium colors, the medium yellow and the medium red. And again, this is kind of a tomato-y with that medium red and then with the dark, we're getting kind of a ketchup. There you go. See that? So, light, medium, dark yellow with the light blues, medium yellows, sorry, um, light, medium, dark blue, light, medium, dark blue, light, medium, dark blue, and this is with the light yellow, the medium yellow, and the dark yellow. Look at the difference of range of colors that you can get. Same here. I want to do the same thing with the purple. I'm just going to put this aside. another sheet of paper so now we're going to do it with the blue and the red so light blue we have light red medium red That light blue and the light red almost make mud because the light red is kind of orangey right so it probably has some yellow in it and when you mix yellow and red and blue you get mud so that turns out to a very grayish kind of almost rust color and that light blue probably has some white in it so that really pastelizes it so there's that one, which is kind of a pinky purple, but still very gray. And this one here, we're getting more of a violet color, but again, very gray because that light blue probably has some white in it and it really pastelizes it. So there you go. So then we'll go medium blue, medium blue, medium blue, light red, medium red, dark red. Again, because that light 
red has kind of a yellow orangey tinge we're making almost a gray mud there's the medium blue with the medium red it's making a gray purple this is kind of the purple this is the purple we were getting uh, no this is not this is a shade lighter because I use the dark purple and then this one now we're starting to actually get a purpley color see that now we have dark blue, dark blue, dark blue, which of course is the one that I've been using, the dark red. So this will be the purple that we get, or sorry, no, this is the purple we'll get because I have the medium red with the dark blue. And here is the light red, which is very orangey. So that light red really, really makes stuff muddy. So it's not good for color mixing, obviously. And I have, this is what we've been getting. The dark blue with the medium red, we've been getting a very dark purple. Not a bright purple at all. Very dark purple. And then this is the two darks together. And it's just amping up the purple. And when you look, when you add white to this, you're getting kind of a nice violet. And when you're adding white to this, we're getting the lighter purple that we've been using still a very brownish purple right over here this would give a nice this would give a nice purple kind of a, a little bit of a lavendery purple see that here's the other one so this is why we can't get the colors that we want now i want to show you This Napfall Crimson. This is a this is a very pinky orangey red, and just with the dark blue. So see, it's even darker than this one. And then I have Alizarin Crimson, which is normally used. Uh, it was used classically to make uh, figures look like they have blood in their face. So a little bit of alizarin crimson would be added to uh, make the flesh color realistic. So it's a very, very dark purpley red to begin with. And that's where we're getting that very, very blue purple. We add a little bit of white to that. See that? This is more of a plum color. This is why Gina couldn't get a nice plum color. It's why I couldn't get a nice plum color. Everything looked like it was in shadow. And it's because I didn't have this red and this blue. Or I had the blue, but I didn't have that red. So you see the problem so you can fix that I mean you don't have to like I don't expect Gina to go out and buy other colors not even a little bit but if you were really into painting and you wanted to expand the colors that you could mix I would suggest
So a light yellow, right now we're using a medium yellow, so one light yellow and a light red, you'll get some nice bright oranges, but it's no good for purples. For the purples, you want the darker red and the darker blues, because when you use a light red, you get these muddy colors, which are yucky. So you might want to get a light yellow, a light red, and mm, I'm going to say either a Napfall Crimson or an Elizabeth, a Crimson. An alizarin crimson, a knotfall crimson, or a crimson crimson, so that you can get these brighter purples. So I hope that helps uh, for the color mixing portion. Now I also wanted to do a little bit on some of the extra brushes that I talked about. Again, I didn't want Gina to have to go out and buy extra brushes. I wanted her to be able to just buy that one kit. Um, but I do want to show you the difference between them. So another piece of the canvas paper. I talked about a fan brush. I talked about a bristle brush. And I was using a shader brush. So I'm just going to use I'm just going to put these aside and I'm going to use um, some blue right here and I'm just going to show you the difference. So with the shader brush, and again this is a little bit more liquidy so we're not going to get the same textured effect. We were doing this to try and get trees and we were doing this to try and get random for bushes, right? And even when we mixed, we wanted another color with it. We were asking you to put several greens uh, and several like purples on so that you could get, and this isn't working because it's very liquidy, so they're mixing instead of sitting beside each other, but you get you get the drift, right? And then we were saying, oh yeah, add a little bit of white, and then we can get we could get a mottled background. And again, it's harder to do this with these liquidy er paints, but I think that you're kind of getting what I'm talking about with the shader brush. That's what we were asking you to do. Well, that's what I was asking you to do. And with a bristle brush, you can put several colors on. See how it's doing that? It's You're getting that mottled randomness. And you can keep going. And it actually does look like bushes on the side of a hill. See that? Let's add a little bit more dark there. See how we can go in and do another layer that looks like shadow? And then we go in and we put another layer on top. And now you're getting you're getting layers of grass. See that? You can't do that with this. I mean, that's what I was trying to get you to do. But it, I mean, you were getting a little bit, but you just weren't getting the same effect. But that's what I was trying to get you to do without having to buy a bristle brush. Now, Gina, if you went to Michael's, a little bristle brush like this would probably only cost you a couple of dollars if, uh, if mom wanted to take you to the store, you would be able to do that. So let me know if you get it. 
If you get it, we will use it for one of the, for the next landscape when we redo it. If you don't, don't worry about it. I'm going to pick a different landscape where you won't need it. Because I'm going to put that barn in if it kills me. So you see that nice effect that you can get with the bristle brush? That's what I'm talking about. Now, the other one is a fan brush. So originally what I was going to get Gina to do when I was doing the barn. <coughs> so I had the barn there. Oops, that's a terrible barn. So I had the barn and I was going to put a tree beside it to try and give it some perspective. I really wanted to do like an evergreen tree because we'd done so much green in the background. I really wanted her to be able to make like a pine tree like this. All right. But there wasn't enough space. And I can't get enough detail with this, and that's why I got frustrated and I just wiped it out. Because generally what you do is you use a fan brush. Now I'm going to turn this over. This, is, this side's beige, so it's going to look a little bit different. But what I wanted to do was use a fan brush and... make an evergreen with the fan brush and then you can use a lighter blue to do the highlights on the ends maybe even a little bit of white because this again this is great for bushes and grass because it fans out see look at that that's awesome Let's zoom in there so you can see that. And again, I'm not even using thick paint. I'm using really thin paint. See how that makes it look more like grass? And I can go in with a lighter. So this is a fan brush. Uh, again, a couple bucks. You don't have to get one, Gina. Um, but if you do, let me know. Let me know if you get other colors as well. But for everybody else out there who is um, following along, I don't want you to have to go out and get other supplies, especially um, if you're not going to continue, but if you are going to continue and I maybe do like an advanced series where we start doing other kinds of things, I want you to be able to get good results. Cause I have to tell you, I was like, I love the mountains here. I'll just show it to you. It's still not dry. Love the mountains. They were awesome. Got a little bit frustrated with my lack of color. Got really frustrated with my lack of ability. Because normal, like I have a drawer full of brushes and when I, whenever I'm doing a landscape, I just pick, pick up my scrubby brush, pick up my fan brush and away I go. I didn't even think about it when I got her to pick up her, her supplies. It never occurred to me. I just didn't want her to have to get a lot of supplies. So there you go. This is what happens. Oops, we're gonna zoom back out. So you will get better results. And better colors. So that's what the difference is. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down here. Thank you so much for joining me for this additional Let's Begin Painting with Acrylics 
video. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, so we might do the landscape again. If Gina decides that she's not going to get other brushes or other colors, I think I'm going to let that one stand. And maybe in an advanced series, we will add the brushes on and we will redo that landscape. But if she's not going to, then there's no point in torturing everybody. <laughs> so we're going to move on to a fun project. The next painting class is actually going to be about abstract painting, which is my forte. Uh, the only additional thing you'll need is a roll of painter's tape or masking tape, whichever one you have. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Bye.